as we reach the midpoint of the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series season, the gloves are off in the championship fight. Drivers and fans are ready for 200 kilometers of action at Canada's home for motorsport, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Canada's NASCAR racers have shown that they are to be respected on road and street circuits. Sure, they lean, they bump, they get a little close for comfort, but these guys and ladies are racers, not drivers. Sit back and enjoy the show because it's never dull when NASCAR shows up to the old Mosport racetrack. Welcome to the NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN. We're just north of Bowmanville, Ontario, as we get set for the Clarington 200. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey will both be patrolling the pit lane for us here today. And Adam, traditionally, by the time we get to this point in the season and entering the second half, the leaders have really separated themselves from the rest of the pack. It's not the case here in 2021. Not at all, Dave. Kevin Lacroix off to a fantastic start, but so are L.P. Dumoulin and Alex Tagliani. And let's not count out Steady Eddie, two-time champion, D.J. Kennington. Trayton Lapsovich is essentially a lock for Rookie of the Year here in 2021, but he's looking for more. He wants the championship this year, and he's shown he's no slouch on road and street circuits here in 2021. And with more on who's in today's lineup, let's send it down pit side and say hello to Clinton Jeffrey. Clinton, great to have you back in the lineup. Thanks, guys. It's great to be back. We talk a lot about the championship contenders as they've all got multiple road course victories. But there's another group we need to talk about today, the one-offs. And they're just here to cash checks and steal trophies. You know, we got Kyle Marcelli back there. He's a wheelman in the Ford number seven. But the other guy we want to talk about here is the smiling assassin, Gary Clute. He hasn't run full-time in two years. They've done a lot of testing, and he ran really good in his last race. Keep your eye on the 59, guys. I'm certain he's going to be around at the end of today. Thanks, Clinton. Gary got a big time win back here in 2015 with an exciting finish off of turn 10. Also racing is Gary's brother, Ryan. He's no slouch either. And starting up front is so important here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And with more on E3 spark plugs qualifying, let's send it down to Todd Lewis. Todd? If you want to see real-life drama, guys, you want to check out qualifying at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Earlier today, it was the 74 bumper-to-bumper -bumper car of Kevin Lacroix who posted the quickest time in qualifying. It was a 122.6, sets him up on the pole. He had troubles the last time at CTMP, we had a transmission failure. It ended his day early. Starting alongside Kevin on the front row, the pole sitter last time at CTMP. It's the 59 of Gary Clute, a very fast race car. He, too, had some mechanical issues the last time out, he's ready to race and ready to have another fast outing. When we come back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, the green flag waves in the Clarington 200. This NASCAR on TSN broadcast is brought to you by Fast Eddie Speedwear, combustion culture collection available at fasteddiespeedwear.com. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By General Tire, the exclusive tire of the NASCAR Pinty Series. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. Well, Dave, it's just about go time here at CTMP. A beautiful afternoon. Great field of race cars lined up as we get sent to throw it down trackside for today's command. Drivers! Sound of speed comes to life here on the front chute of the 10-turn, 3.9-kilometer road course that is Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. On boards, we've got a lot of them. We saw Kevin Lacroix, L.P. Dumoulin, and Andrew Ranger. We've also got Ray Jr. Quartermanch in the number eight. Everybody giving a thumbs up, indicating to the NASCAR officials that their cars have fired up okay and will be able to roll off. There's L.P. Dumoulin. He won the first stop here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, picking up his first win of 2021. And a really impressive drive was had by Matthew Scannell, this driver of the number 99, my box, O'Neill Electric Supply Machine. Name our caveman, the Quickwick fire starter number 20 of Trayton Lapsovich, Rookie of the Year contender. Quickwick running that 
contest to name the caveman that's their sort of mascot for Quick Quick. Right, as we take a look at your E3 spark plug starting lineup, Kevin Lacroix, as we mentioned, on pole alongside Gary Clue. And there's LB Dumoulin, Andrew Ranger making up row number two. A couple of past winners here. In the third row is Trayton Lapsovich in the 20, the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Row number four is Alex Tagliani in the 18, the 99 of Matthew Skinner. Kyle Marcelli in the number seven, and Brett Taylor qualifies in 10th in the number three. Then row number six has DJ Kennington and the 52 of Alex Gannett. In the seventh row, it's Ryan Clute in the 42, the 56 of Malcolm Strong. And a row eight is Dexter Stacy in the 92, the 77 of Jocelyn Fecto. Drivers with a little bit of work to do here today include the 84 of Larry Jackson, qualified row number nine, Mark Dilley in the 64. Then row 10 has Sam Fellows in the 98, Ray Quartemage Jr. behind the wheel of the eight. In row number 11, it's David Thorndike in the 67 with Brent Weller in the 61. And our final row is TJ Renamato in the two in the 80 of J.F. LaBerge. Drivers go to work trying to get some heat in those general tires on a beautiful afternoon for a race here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Beautiful sunshine all day long as we take a look at today's E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. And the big deal today will be the length of this one compared to the last one. We're back to the traditional 51 lap, 200 kilometer format where these teams are gonna pit definitely to take on fuel to get to the finish. And most of the front runners, Dave, will take on tires as well. Let's head down pit side, check in with Clinton. Well, one of the stories in the pits, guys, is Gary Klute. He ran very well in the last race here at CTMP until the sway bar arm fell off the car, took him out of the lead, and actually almost cost Tagliani a whole bunch of props. The sway bar arm went up over the roof, hit the windshield, but the safety of these NASCAR machines did their job, everybody was safe, and the only loser there was Klute, because he was going to win that race, but it didn't pan out. A couple of other stories to watch as this race gets going. The 51 had an oil leak problem the last time at CTMP. That resurfaced again during qualifying. They think they have found a fix. We'll know pretty quickly. Also, the 17 Castrol Dodge car of DJ Kennington, a oil pressure problem. They made a motor change. He, too, should be good to go. So the field gathers on the back straightaway. 12 rows strong. They're all going to smooshed together like an accordion. That's the technical term, Dave, the smush. That's exactly what they do off turn number 10. In the last race, it was all the 59 of Gary Clute who led 20 of the 30 laps. But as you heard, Clinton, parts fell off that car and unfortunately came home fifth. He starts to the outside of Kevin Lacroix now as they work their way through turn number nine. And into turn number 10, you see the pace car wheel off down pit lane. So the start will be in the hands of the bumper to bumper Dodge driver, Kevin Lacroix, onto the front stretch they go. We'll see the green flag. And they're underway here in the Clarington 200. Ooh, contact with Kyle Marcelli and I want to say Matthew Scannell, but out in front is Kevin Lacroix on the 74. That could have been horrible if anybody got crossways, but Thankfully, we get it sorted and head towards turn two. The field will try to sort itself single file, but you always want to be aggressive and be gaining spots on the starts and restarts rather than losing. So Matthews Canell has rebounded nicely from that contact on the front stretch. Well, the thing about the early laps, too, is that the good is still in these general tires. They don't drop off much, but there is a little bit of drop off as the laps start to wear off. Ryan Klute to the inside of Brett Taylor down through turn five. Malcolm Strong going to try as well, but he did not get as good a run through the turn. Strong in that R Club, number 56, prepared by Jim Bray Motorsports. Had a great run in race number one until problems crept up in that 56. Ended his run early. And Brett Taylor taking back that spot. On the outside, a power move down the long straightaway into turn number eight. You can see side by side, Malcolm Strawn and Dexter Stacy. Stacy in the bullies trucks up the purple, black, and white entry, the number 92. He's on the outside in turn 10. That's going to be hard to hang, and he'll slot in behind the 56. But Stacy 
has taken a cue from team manager at EHR. When Jason Hathaway was a driver, he never really qualified all that well, but boy, did he ever run well in the race, and that's exactly what Dexter Stacy is doing here in 2021. And he's been racing with a lot of confidence this season. It's fun to watch, but at the front of the field, it's Kevin Lacroix, but Gary Clute and LP Dumlin right on his tail. We spoke about this in the last race. It was a sprint race. There were no pit stops. These races normally build a lot differently because there is no onus to get out there and get on it right away. Just get into a comfortable rhythm. You're going to be making pit stops. Right on board, Trayton Lapsovich up the Andretti straightaway. Grabs that fourth gear, and then it's just a long climb up through the RPM band. Dexter Stacy and Malcolm Strong side by side, down towards turn number eight. 92 is handling well on the straightaway, that's for sure, as he flexes his muscle and moves around the 56 in turn number eight. No question there, he completes the pass well before the turn. On board with the 51 of Andrew Ranger. We had to drop to the back at the original start, as you heard Todd mention off the top, but he's marching forward very quickly, already up inside the top 15. Andrew Ranger has passed a lot of cars here in this doubleheader at CTMP. He's been riding behind Strawn in that 56 for a couple of laps now, and doesn't look like he's content there, but he's not really pushing the issue yet. Turn three is a good opportunity for a passing location, so Ranger will have a look through there as we take a look back up towards the front of the field, and Kevin Lacroix now opening up about a three-car length gap over the 59 of Gary Clute. The middle of the pack is really staying in shape here. Again, we normally see the field string out quite a ways, almost to the point, Dave, where it can be difficult to follow who is in what position. It's not real hard here. We've got the top 15 cars roaring down the straightaway. More than that, even. On the strength of that win, too. And race number one here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. He met the winner, now the points leader, so he's riding a little boost of confidence, now sitting in third. That is some throaty sounding engines. They sound phenomenal as we look back now on LP Dumlin from the back bumper of Gary Clute. You, you talked about this being a little bit longer of a race. Yes, there's strategy. Yes, there's pit stops. And we're expecting to see the first fuel stops happen somewhere around lap 10. But realistically, the drivers aren't getting separated by all that much. So what we saw in the sprint race, the 30-lap race here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, is essentially playing out the same way here in a longer race. You know, there's always a bit of monkey see, monkey do in racing. You know, if you see Kevin Lacroix out in front running those blistering laps, you think, well, it has to be okay if I do that too. So it's one thing to, to run a faster pace than you might normally, but it's another thing to have all these cars capable of running those speeds. There's always been a rabbit out there in this series that was much faster than everybody else, but it looks like the field was caught up. Yeah, and the field has caught up to the back of lap traffic, and out of this race is DJ Kennington. Todd, what's up? No, the frustration clearly visible. That is the 17 retiring for the day. DJ Kennington has pulled off at the end of pit road. His day is done early. Go up. Blown up. Oh, wow. Not something you hear very often out of the Kennington stable. And blown up. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we called him Steady Eddie off the top of the show because he's had a quietly consistent season here in 2021. So a rare DNF for the Castrol Edge Dodge team. But we continue under green and we continue with the bumper to bumper Lacroix tuning number 74 of Kevin Lacroix, your race leader. In the lap traffic now, though. Yeah, not sure what happened to J.F. LaBerge in the 80 machine. Lap 5 is awfully early to begin getting into lap traffic for the leaders. But look at how where they caught him going into turn number three it looks like LaBerge didn't know that the leaders were coming and LaBerge off the racetrack in turn number three now doing a little agricultural racing wow fortunately kept that car straight gets back on the racetrack thankfully didn't collect anybody else in that melee and he manages to find his way back on there he is in the Dago Bear number 80 
in the WMI stables and right in front of the 42 of Ryan Clute goes J.F. LaBears. So potentially communication problems in the 80, but Donald Teach will be back in that car for our next race back in the ovals at Flamborough Speedway. I'm sure it's been a long wait for Donald Teach. He'll be looking forward to getting back behind the wheel. Gary Clute riding behind the race leader, Kevin Lacroix. see a good look from the onboards there you see darker patches of asphalt in certain areas around this track there's a strip of it in turn number one the majority of this facility was repaved during the COVID pandemic in 2020 so you see turn two has brand new asphalt and the driver's telling me that there's a whole lot of grip up for grabs on that new asphalt if you get off of these little strips into the old asphalt it's like you jump the cushion on a dirt track yeah, exactly. You can, you can see the car's really sticking through turn number two. I noticed that a lot. They're, they're carrying crazy speed. Look who's starting to carry some crazy speed in the GM Pie A number 22. Mark Antoine Cameron has closed the gap onto the back of the WeatherTech 47 of LP Jumelain. Trayton Lapsovich continues to hound the Rona Viagra number 18 of Alex Tagliani. This is a high-speed education for Trayton Lapsovich, but boy, he's doing a great job. He's a pretty good student out there. Is Tagliani leading him around? You can still see the leaders within sight. This has to be a huge confidence build for Trayton Lapsovich. And see the car wiggle at the end of the straightaway in the wind. I mean, we, we don't talk an awful lot about aerodynamics here in the NASCAR Pinty Series, but at the end of the Andretti straightaway, you definitely feel it too. Whoa. And problems for the 20. That car just shot right out of the groove going into turn number 10. It is dead in the water. That is not a good spot. Yeah, so the engine shuts down now for the Quick Wick RGC entry up. Trayton Lapsovich was running comfortably inside the top five. Obviously, full course caution for this one. The car still on the racing surface on the exit of turn 10. So very dangerous spot for it to come to rest. Let's have another look. We're on board trait, and what can we hear? Yeah, he knew something was wrong. That was in turn number nine, so well before he got to where he stopped. Something broke. Yeah, I'm not sure what that might be on the Lapsovich number 20. What a shame. RGC Sports, they support a lot in, uh, in motorsports. They've yeah. got three teams in this series alone, Dave. Yeah, and they sponsor late model teams in and around Ontario. So big supporters of motorsports. Unfortunately, one of their drivers having some pretty tough luck here in the Clarington 200 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The worst possible spot as well to have that bad luck. It is a long push to get Trayton back to the pits. And speaking of the pits, couple of drivers deciding now is the opportunity to come in and get service. Clinton? Gary Clute will put the number 59 car here close to the wall. They're going to make a slight adjustment on the right rear. And they're going to take gas and go. Good stop for Clute here. That is extremely early to come in for your fuel. Tight squeeze between the 18 and the 22. Alex Tagliani with a light brush on the left front of that 22. Fuel going in, both the 18 and the 22. Tire pressure check on the They are both down the way. Now watch this. Cameron would not have been happy that he got penned into his pit stall, so he accelerates around the Tagliani number 18 to retake that spot. Got to be careful to keep it under the speed limit. NASCAR is always watching. And we're watching your race leader, Kevin Lacroix, led since the drop of the green. Canadian Tire Motorsport Park opened back in 1961. It's hosted Canadian Grand Prix F1 events in the 60s and 70s. Today, it's the host of the NASCAR Pinty Series in the Clarington 200 as we get set to go back to green after our first full course caution for the stricken number 20 of Trayton Lapsovich, who came to a stop in turn number 10. On board with Ray Jr. Cordemont, he's headed to the pits. A little bit of strategy at play here as crew chief Jason Hathaway calling him in as the field 
goes back to green, and they'll rush towards turn number one. Kevin Lacroix with another fantastic start. He'll lead the way down into turn number one. L.P. Dumlin settles into second with Kyle Marcelli in third. Clinton Jeffrey is on the scene on pit road. The number eight machine of Ray Jr. Cordemarche here on pit road. A slight adjustment to the left rear, and he will be down and away. So a quick stop for the eight machine as we continue under green at the front. And look at the seven of Kyle Marcelli, who's now up into the top three after those pit stops have shaken out. Marcelli had a tough day yesterday, mechanical failure. He's showing a lot of speed. You could, the learning curve is steep with these cars, but you can see that he's getting the hang of it. A veteran of the sports car ranks, but normally a paddle shifter in sports cars. He's back to an old H pattern shifter here in these cars, and he said the biggest struggle he had initially in a stock car was the sight lines. You don't have a lot of them in these cars compared to the cars he normally runs in. Everything is different as we see Mark Antoine Camarana, that 22 machine, alongside of Mark Dilley. Here's Alice Gannett in the 52 and the 92 of Dexter Stacy. Gannett quietly had a good run at Circuit Icar, one of the last road circuits we were on in the NASCAR Pinty series. They struggled a little bit in qualifying, running inside the top 10 right now as Gary Clute moves up another spot. Dove to the inside of the O'Neill Electric Supply, number 84 of Larry Jackson. Here's Alex Tagliani on the inside of Mark Dilley. And the Leland machine up on the outside, and that's going to open the door for Brett Taylor in the TCB Trailers number three to move through as well. How about Sam Fellows in that Curb Records number 98? He's back there about 10 car lengths, behind, maybe 20 car lengths behind Dexter Stacy. Gary Clute applying the pressure in the 59 with Malcolm Strawn right behind him. But Sam Fellows finally looks right at home behind the wheel of that stock car. Well, he, he's on a track that he's done some laps in in other forms of motorsport. He's raced a Porsche GT3 Cup here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And we should mention that the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich, the team working on the drivetrain. So a drivetrain issue on the 20. Yeah, drive shaft dropped out of the car. So... That'll require a new drive shaft 99 times out of 100, and we'll get that bolted back together. He needs to come out and make some laps, not just in the hunt for the Rookie of the Year championship, in the hunt for the overall championship here this year. Yeah, this will be a tough blow for Lapsovich, but there's some good tracks coming up. Flamborough Speedway is one where he has run very well. Andrew Ranger past almost all the cars in the field. He's going to come in the pits and have to do it again. From fourth spot, the 51 down pit lane again. There's that pit road speed limit. Now pit road dives down, downhill into turn number one. Todd? What a charge by the 51 car of Andrew Ranger from the back of the pack up to fourth before he relinquishes the spot for his scheduled fuel stop. That can being empty. The crew waiting on it. He's full. He's gone. Dave, one thing we see, the later these drivers pitch, you can see it's, it is taking longer to put fuel in because there's more fuel being put into these gas tanks. But you can see every lap that goes by changes the amount of time you spend on pit road. Next time by, we'll have completed 13 laps out of a scheduled 51, so there is still a lot of racing left to play out here in the Clarington 200. But everybody's still chasing the number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Winner in the rain at Circuit Icar was looking very strong in race number one here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And once again, showing good speed here in race number two. Up through eight, nine, and ten. I love the sound of them coming at us up the back straight away. These cars just, they hit a song. I mean, it, it really, that and that's the best adjective I can use. It does sound like a song as they fly down that Andretti straight away. Kyle Marcelli losing touch a little bit with that lead duo. He's almost a second and a half behind, but it's a good safe spot for Kyle Marcelli just to turn laps. You can see, you get a great vantage point of what the fastest cars on the track are doing, and he can gauge what he's got to do behind the wheel of that number seven. His car owner, Dave Jacobs, was saying that Marcelli didn't have a lot of laps following the faster drivers, and is good for him to see where these drivers are able to gain ground or lose it and possibly he'll be able to pick up in some spots. 
And this is the last race of the year we expect for Kyle Marcelli. Pete Shepard will be back behind the wheel of that number seven when the series goes to Flamborough. Now the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin starting to turn up the pressure at the front of the field. What's interesting about L.P. Dumoulin, he picked up a win in race number one, starting from second spot. Believe it or not, all three of his wins, now four wins, have come when he started in second here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Worth noting, he did not start second here today. And that's the kind of superstition that's hard for a race car driver to overcome. That, that'll be on his mind as Dexter Stacy. We've already seen he's not afraid to run side by side through turn number eight. That's an impressive pass on Alex Gannett. Turn number eight is generally a momentum corner too. He just sticks it to the inside. You see the car slide out just a little bit and he'll pick up the position. Fourteen laps into this 51 lap of Ferrius Sagonet's car wiggle. Just a little bit of the exit of turn one there. Now we're seeing the field string out. And I mean, even this is it's close racing. I mean, LP Dumoulin just a car length and a half off the back of the race leader. But everyone else is finding their groove to run in as these laps click off. Well, at this point, you want to protect your tires and maintain as much as you, you can. Remember, we saw a lot of brake troubles at the Grand Prix de Tuanivier, so that's going to play into this scenario as well, into this strategy. The drivers will be aware they may have to protect those brakes just a little bit more. Yeah, you would think they definitely have to be mindful of that compared to yesterday. We see a waving blue flag on the straightaway, and that usually means that there is a problem ahead. Now, I didn't see anything up ahead. And it is the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich once again off the pace in the RGC Chevy Camaro. He's off to the side, so... We stay green at this particular moment. Just a local caution. That's the waving blue flag. If you're a fan of sports cars, a waving blue flag generally means slower traffic. The leaders are coming. In NASCAR, a waving blue flag means a problem in an area. More pit stops, Glenn. Matthew Scannell pulls the number 99 My Box machine here to pit road. Just going to be a quick splash of fuel down and away for the 99 sign waving up and down to indicate the spot to stop for the 52 of Alex Gannett. The crew cleans the front grill off. Little trouble getting the probe in for the fuel can. It's flowing smoothly now. He's waiting on that tank to get topped up. The overflow just about full. Sam Fellows also in on pit road for a quick splash of gas. He'll take the 98 machine back to the speedway. On the track, it is still Kevin Lacroix by just that single car length over LP Dumlin. And, and if we catch it, we're going to see Trayton Lapsovich's number 20 machine off to the side in a bit of a runoff space. Full course caution now as Lapsovich comes to a rest on the entrance of pit lane. Actually, no, just off to the side here on the back straightaway. Didn't get to pit lane. He was headed that way. But he is stopped on the Andretti straightaway. And look at this strategy playing out. Here's your race leader coming down pit lane along with LP Dumoulin, Kyle Marcelli, and I believe that's Dexter Stacy following along as well. All of the front running cars headed down pit lane again, a long pit road at slow speed. Clinton Jeffrey is on the scene. Kyle Marcelli will pull the number seven Ford here to pit road. A quick splash of gas for him. The car has been running fantastic. They're not going to waste any time, and away he goes. Drivers side tires first on the 74. Smooth stop so far. They will shift over, then change right side rubber on that bumper-to-bumper -bumper car. Also behind him, the 47 of LP Dumoulin. A winner last time here at CTMP. The left side of the car is already hot service complete. Two fresh general tires set to go on the right side of that car. Others behind him also making pit stops. The 51 of Andrew Ranger and the 52 of Alice Gannett. The 74 is down and away. Dave, traditionally, this is the only track on the circuit where you will ever see a four-tire change. On the oval tracks, you're only allowed to change two tires at a time per stop, but because CTMP is so big, they let them do all four. And pit road gets busy, but you don't really have to hurry too, too much, obviously. You want to trick, try and pick up as many spots as you possibly can, but this is shaken up the front of the field. The 59 of Gary Clute is your new leader. 
welcome back to race number six of 11 scheduled here in the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series. We're at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the Clarington 200. The pace car set to peel off as the field lines up two by two. Great formation of cars through turn number nine. They'll box up into turn number 10. A very slow pace. Gary Clute did this in race number one. The last time we were here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, he bunches them up super tight here on the front chute before jumping on the gas and setting him free. Look at the teammates in row number two. Matthew Scannell on the outside. On the inside, it's Larry Jackson. A couple of O'Neill Electric Supply drivers. It looks like Jackson might have let his teammate in for better track position. On board, Mark Antoine Cameron, and it looks like he's running down a section of the 401 in rush hour. Look at how many cars are around him. Powers on the outside at turn number two, passing one car, two cars. What a great run by Cameron. Ryan Clute in the legendary motor car, number 42, goes around the 84 O'Neill Electric entry of Larry Jackson picking up a spot there, but still look at this gaggle of race cars towards the back of the pack. And I mean, it's always that way after pit stops, comers and goers. You got people charging through the field, people falling back through the field. Look at that number 22 alongside the 64 of Mark Dilley. We, of course, saw the, those cars battle so many times. Mark Dilley with the 22, Burgundy Doors, and Scott Steckley behind the wheel. And we've got to mention it, Dave, we do every time. <laughs> Still looking for the first road course win in the history of the NASCAR series for that famed number 22. They got close, and you know who almost came close to disaster? Kyle Marcelli put a tire off down the Andretti straightaway. He saw that Ford Fusion wiggle a little bit before he gathered it back up. And you can hear how aggressively they downshift and use that engine to help slow the race car down into these corners. And Kevin Lacroix is just a master of it. Mark Antoine Cameron shadowing the 98 of Sam Fellows and Todd standing by with the driver is out. DJ Kennington back in street clothes. Boy, this has been a frustrating day for you. Ah, it sure has. I mean, our Castro Ledge guys worked their butts off all day. We thought we had a problem with the motor um, in, the, in the car earlier. We were having a, a flutter and we thought, you know what, let's not take a chance and, and have any issues today. We're racing for a championship and we busted our butts and changed that engine, put a brand new engine in there. And, just because it's new doesn't mean it's right. So we had an issue with the second one, and it's just frustrating for all of our partners with Spark Power and Castrol. And I apologize to them because that's not the way we like to do things, but that's racing, and uh, we'll be back and get some wins on these ovals coming up real soon. See you at Flamborough. You betcha. The place that DJ Cannington is very comfortable is Flamborough Speedway. He won there in a late model before. It'll be interesting to see him back there in a NASCAR Pinty Series car. I think he'll be plenty comfortable out there and it'll be a lot of fun to watch i mean we've been road course after road course after road course let's get back to the ovals where it's not that things happen a lot quicker it's just you get to seek your revenge much faster on an oval track gary clute down on pit road in that number 59. your leader pulls out of the pack in down pit lane he will hit that pit road speed limit his box is right at the front end 59 of gary clute in for an unexpected stop they're going under the hood and it's going to be a power steering fluid issue here for clue had high hopes he had trouble in the last race and as he was leading finds problems here again today well, that's heartbreak you can see the crew going to work on the right front tire as well making sure all lug nuts are tight there so possibly clue felt a vibration at times and came in to get things checked out uh, remember, the laps they're turning are around a minute 23 seconds, so you've got time to come down pit road, and if the crew can assess what the problem is quickly enough, you'll get back out on the lead lap, so we'll see if another yellow comes out, if Gary Clute is able to close back in. Oh, my goodness, speaking of yellows coming out. That's a big off. That is almost certainly going to be a yellow flag as J.F. LaBerge has stuffed it into the tire barrier. My goodness, that car is buried. That's turn number three. You can see the tire marks in the grass, so it looks like that car did not turn at all. And you're right, full course caution for this one as the 59 of Gary Clute goes through. So that's good news for Clute. He'll be able to catch up to the back of the field. But here comes the leader, and we'll see the full course caution this way, this time bias. It looked like Matthew Skinnell was getting excited looking for the lead at that point. 
Well, the message doesn't always get delivered that quickly, as let's have a look at the onboard here. Coming into turn three here now. And it looks like he just got out of that black strip and into the old asphalt, and that might have been what cost him. You saw the front tires lock up as he tried to brake. That car is so deep under the tire wall, he got out the driver's door and rested his arm on the wall. There should be six feet between the driver's window and the wall. But he is out and okay, and that's one of the benefits of having a tire wall rather than a concrete barrier here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. But a couple drivers taking advantage of this caution to head down pit lane. The 84 is one of them. And that's Jared Morphy putting the fuel in the 84 this afternoon. Jared raced last night in his Canadian Vintage Modified where he leads the season standings. He's got a fire suit, might as well put himself to work. We'll be right back with more NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. The Clarington 200 from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is brought to you by Quickwick, the world's number one fire starter. By WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. And by Sunbelt, when you're ready to tackle that large job or weekend project, turn to sunbeltrentals.com for all your equipment needs. Under yellow, about to go back to green. We've got another congratulations we need to throw out as well. Dave Bradley on his recent Outlaw Midget victory. Nice job, Dave. Thanks very much. It's, uh, I've been doing that for about five years, so it's a long time coming, but it's nice when everything comes together. And uh, makes me feel like I know what I'm talking about a little bit sometimes, but not really. Fake it until you make it, my friend. <laughs> the 18 of Tagliani will lead him into turn number one again as we get back to green. 25 laps in the books of a scheduled 51. Just halfway through this event, we've seen a number of different leaders. Alex Tagliani out in front of Matthew Scannell. Here goes Mark Antoine Cameron to the inside of turn number three. Andrew Ranger tucked in there as well in the Rick Ware Racing number 51, the purple and yellow entry for Ranger chasing the 22, and Scannell manages to fight off the challenge by the 22 of Cameron. That is not an easy task as Ryan Kluke gets up out of the groove. That allows Kevin Lacroix to the inside. They'll race side by side off of turn five. What's interesting is on the entrance to turn five, you can see some dust come off the front valence of these race cars. That's an indication of how steep that hill is on the run up into turn number five. It really doesn't show it on camera. When you're in a race car, it's a hard climb. You need to make a trip to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. If you've enjoyed some of the views you're seeing, some of the great racing, they don't do justice to the elevation changes, the terrain that this track has carved into. Quick ride on board, Kyle Maricelli as he goes up through the gears, headed towards turn number one. You can see the lean on that number seven Simcoe Building Center Ford Fusion. We should mention everyone in the field has tires on their race car. So they've taken their new set of tires except for the 18 of Alex Tagliani and the 99 of Matthew Scannell. They actually do all have tires on the fourth. <laughs> they started Each that of the way. cars in the field. But yeah, the 18 of Tagliani, the 99 of Scannell, their general tires are a little bit older. It's, in fact, 26 laps over. It's an interesting strategy play, though. If you feel that you can sort of balance those tires and stretch them out as far as you can, Tagliani's lap times are still very, very competitive as he has clean air in front of him. We ride on board with Andrew Ranger, and how many times did we see Matthew Scannell when he was driving the Jim Bray car run a different pit strategy and lead a lot of laps at this point in the race? Scannell has run two races in 2021, both top 10 finishes. As a matter of fact, his most successful year in the Pinty Series was in 2014. He had three top 10s, but it took him an entire season to get to that mark. You know what? It still astonishes me as fast as he ran on so many different racetracks that his best finish in the series still is a seventh place. I mean, he is due for a podium, a top five. It'll come. And showing great maturity as well. 
And that Larry Jackson owned number 99, Matthew Scannell, just ahead of three-time series champion Andrew Ranger. Look at the rubber that's being laid down in these corners. And I mean, they just, so much grip out there for these drivers. And if we're talking about rubber, let's talk about the Fairchilds. Dave Craig and Robin Fairchild doing such a great job in this series in a year where it's been tough to track down rubber. Yeah, a lot of different series around North America struggling with tire supply. The Fairchilds in charge of the general tires here in the NASCAR Pinty Series make sure that they have a full trailer full each and every stop. And they've done the tires since this series began in 2007. I just love that sound, hearing them flash past that camera position down the Andretti straightaway, really at full song at that point. You see the hill as you head towards turn number eight. You just sort of float the car through there. Watch the back end get a little bit happy through that turn. Turn 10 offers a good passing opportunity. Mark Antoine Cameron might have thought about it there. Now these two leaders are teammates. Alex Tagliani in the 18, Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. They both run out of the Scott Stackley stables, but we have seen in the past they don't always drive like teammates, Dave. No, once you're out of the paddock, it really is every man, woman for themselves here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. You'll fight your brother as hard as you'll fight anybody else. You're Mark Antoine Cameron. You know the 18 is on old tires. You know the 99 is on old tires, but you're probably not even thinking that much about what's behind you because you've got a fast race car. How long are you content to run behind the 18 before you want to push, push the envelope and make a move? Well, speaking of pushing the envelope, here comes the 74. Kevin Lacroix, textbook move on the entrance to turn 5A. And Kyle Marcelli will take that position as well in turn 5B. Thank you very much. You're dodging my question, Dave. A little bit. You're Mark Antoine Cameron. <laughs> when, when do you make the move? Well, you still almost have half the race to go. You don't want to push your own general tires that much harder and wear them out prematurely because towards the end of the race, tires are so important, and Alex Tagliani knows that. He may be keeping his set for potentially a late race caution and a pit stop. You might have just made a great point. He could be using Tagliani as his own pacemaker out there. We've got a report in the pits about Tag. Guys, an interesting strategy play from the 18 team. Just checked with them a little while ago. Alex will not pit in the foreseeable future for tires. A couple of things weighing into this. He is not reporting any drop off in speed right now. He is very fast at the front of the field. The team also made a small change before the qualifying session this morning. It was not to their liking, but now they have to live with it. They are thinking big picture, big points day possible. Who's to say if they will pit at all for tires, but right now, he's not coming anytime soon. And Tag can make that car as wide as he needs to for as long as he can to keep the other drivers behind him. So possibly a good roll of the dice here for the driver of the 18. It's hard to argue against it. I mean, he's running fast laps. The 22 machine, we don't know if he has enough to make the pass. But while we're thinking of it, let's wish the tire changer on the 22, Steve Taylor, a happy birthday. Welcome back to your source for NASCAR PT Series Racing in Canada and TSN. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Clinton Jeffrey, both patrolling the pits for us here today as we take a look at Alex Tagliani continues to lead this field. Either I'm crazy or a little bit of smoke just came out the right front of Alex Tagliani as he crested the hill and then got on the brakes for turn eight. Possibly under braking. We're going to keep an eye on that for sure. We're now under 20 laps to go here in this 51 lap race. And really, Tagliani has been the class of the field. But look back there. There's the WeatherTech Dodge, the 47 of LB Jumelay. Remember, he's your points leader coming into this race. He hasn't rocketed through the field like we would expect. Take on some fresh tires, get back out there. He's back in that eighth position. And the leader is about to come into lap traffic, so possibly an opportunity there for the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. All depends on where the 18 catches that lap traffic. You have to be fast, but you also have to be lucky when you're dealing with the slower cars. How good is it to see campers around this race facility again? 
I mean, it's it's not packed there, responsibly separated around the grounds here, but so nice to see people able to enjoy the races again. And the folks here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park really rolled out the red carpet to welcome the NASCAR Pinty Series, all the crew and family here this weekend. It is nice to be back, isn't it? I just can't get over how close that lead pack is. So LP Dumoulin running in eighth, and he's they're all within that same group of race cars. 32 laps into this, that is a long, long way to run to be this close. Now we talked about tag on old tires with no plans to stop in the near future. How about your third place runner, the white car with the yellow trim, Matthew Skinnell. He also doesn't have new tires and he's holding his own in third. Well, I'm hearing word that this was not strategy for the 99 of Skinnell. I'm hearing the crew is having a hard time communicating with their driver. They have tires ready, but at this point, I can't see him coming into the pits. Holding off the challenge there, the Lacroix tuning number 74 of Kevin Lacroix, the 7 of Kyle Marcelli, right in there as well. You see, right back there on the back bumper, an interesting logo, an interesting design, a little squirrel on the back bumper of the Simcoe Building Center, number 7 of Kyle Marcelli. I asked him about it because I thought it was strange. He said it's a longtime sponsor and friend, Dean Martin, helping him out here this weekend with a little extra funding to get him behind the wheel of this Dave Jacobs ride. So that's his logo. And that's why it's on the back bumper. For the right sponsor agreement, Dave, I would walk <laughs> around with a squirrel tail. <laughs> I just, things I'm willing to do. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> we may not have a new sponsor for the next show. <laughs> Look at that, though. The front of the field really covered by a blanket. We talked about tire strategy, making late race stops, but there's so many cars still on the lead lap that it's really a gamble if you come in at this point. It would take something very serious for these drivers to have to come in. They've made their bed. All you can hope as we see Matthew Scannell get off the racetrack there just a little bit on the exit of turn 10 is that this pace is comfortable for them, but I have a feeling there's going to come a point it's tough for them to match the pressure tires. Kyle well, Marcelli floats it down through turn number two, and Todd Lewis is standing by pit side. He's caught up with another Kyle. Todd? New member of Team 20 this weekend for Trayton Lapsovich. That is 16-year-old Kyle Steckley, the son of Scott Steckley, who, of course, runs 22 racing. Kyle won his first APC race last night. He's working on the team this weekend. He and his dad were supposed to be changing tires together, but things went awry a little bit earlier for the 20 team. But Kyle Steckley learning from his dad, learning all of the tricks of the trade, working on the team, working on the cars. He is really making some progress at a very young age. I'm going to throw in a little insider information too, Dave. Kyle Steckley won that race at Flamborough last night. He really had to twist Dad's arm to even let him run that special event when they had so many other things going on this weekend. I'm sure Scott's pretty pleased that he let him run. Yeah, the question, of course, came out earlier today of when is he going to get in a NASCAR Pinty Series car? And Dad, Scott Steckley said, when he comes with some money. <laughs> Well, that's a, it's a business, that's for sure, as Kevin Lacroix with that 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock wheel grip putting the pressure on Matthew Scannell, another bump down into turn one. Turn one's a good spot to make that move, and look at Kyle Marcelli trying to follow him through. Marcelli will go to the outside of turn number two. It'll be a bold move if it sticks, and I don't think it will. You can see Scannell right there getting on the throttle. Back end comes out. Lift, get on the throttle again. Back end comes out. I think we might be seeing the effects of those older tires on the 99. Yeah, just watch the back end slide out in turn number three compared to the other cars around him. Again, Scannell running on tires that he started this race. So 35 lap old general tires underneath that number 99. And I may be about to say something really stupid, so mark this on your calendar. But what people might not understand is there's only so much grip in tires. Even when they're brand new, you can't just tromp on the gas all the way to the floor. It's always a gentle dance, ease onto the throttle. And as they get older and older, it's less and less. It's like driving on ice, Dave. Just like your road tires, they wear out, don't stick as well. So that's what some of the drivers dealing with right now.
Welcome back to the Clarington 200, the NASCAR Pinty Series, as we pick up a battle inside the top five, the 51 of Andrew Ranger working over the 99 of Matthew Skinnell and ducks underneath in turn five. Nobody makes that move as well as Andrew Ranger through turn five onto the straightaway, partly because I don't think he cares if there's someone on the outside of him. He's using the whole racetrack anyhow. So that could be why people give him that room coming through that turn. Skinnell coming back on the outside, though. It is worth mentioning, though, the crew chief on the 51 is Rick Verburn. His son, Ryan, races micro sprints on dirt. And Ryan picked up his very first heat race win earlier on. DJ Kennington's son, Chase, also races those machines. And they're coming along very quickly. It's a family sport as Gary Clute uses up Matthew Skinnell for turn number 10. That opens the door for L.P. Dumoulin to slide through on the inside as well. Puts Skinnell back to the eighth spot. And this might be the eye-opener that the 99 team needs. Maybe now is the time you're starting to think, if we get a caution, maybe we come in under grain. We really need new tires at this point. He really does, but look in the rearview mirror. He doesn't have much else to lose, really. Now, Brett Taylor is quite a few car lengths back in the Fast Eddie Speedwear TCB Trailers number three as we ride on board the 47 of LP Dumoulin. He looks very comfortable. We've mentioned this before, Dave, but there is nowhere more comfortable for a race car driver than his own seat in his own car. I mean, they're positioned as such for maximum comfort, laid back just a little bit, contour to the driver's body. Well, they, they take so much time. A seat fitting is actually a lot of time. It's usually over the course of a day. They make sure that everything is correct before they bolt it in. It's not just strap your seat in, go racing. Boy, and as we were talking, I'm noticing Alex Tecliani has opened up just a little bit on camera, and we're not talking about much, maybe four car lengths instead of two, but that's surprising to me that he would open that gap at all. We talked before, Cameron on fresher tires, very similar equipment, he should be faster. But is this gamble going to pay out as a 59 of Gary Clute, the Trailcon leasing? Dodge slides around that corner. Look at where we are on the lap chart. 39 laps down of a scheduled 51. So if you're Alex Tagliani, maybe you're thinking, I've got two sevens that have come up on the wheel. All I need is that other seven to come up, and I'd be in victory lane. Well, the new is almost worn off those tires. Well, the new is worn yeah. off, but the, the mediocre part of the tires is almost wore off for Alex Tagliani. And for Mark Antoine Cameron, a similar situation as Matthews Canel putting the pressure on LP Dumoulin. Yeah. Matthew Scannell on the outside in turn number four. Both cars wiggling severely under braking coming into turn number five. Watch them accelerate out of the turn five seat onto that Andretti straightaway. Scannell will catch the draft, looks to the outside. Now to the inside he goes, but he looks like he's carrying a little bit more speed than the 47. Old tires or not, Scannell still got lots of fight left in him as he makes the pass into turn number eight, clears him for that entry into nine and ten, overshoots the exit of turn nine just a little bit there. He's trying to have a listen on the WeatherTech Dodge. It doesn't sound like it's down a cylinder or missing a beat. So we'll keep an eye on the WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin. Remember, he's your points leader coming into today's event. He is indeed, as Matthew Scannell putting a little bit of distance between himself and that WeatherTech number 47. TJ Rinomato in the two machine, staying out of harm's way of the leaders as they head past Andrew Ranger in that 51, trying to close in on that top four out in front of him. Cameron has closed a little bit, four tenths of a second, the last time by for the 22 behind the 18 of Alex Tagliani. But Tagliani maintains that lead. Kevin Lacroix, Kyle Marcelli round out the top four as it stands right now, but the field not very stretched out at the front. Great to see Matthew Scannell in that family number 99. You want to know how much of a family affair it is? Howie Scannell Sr. raced the 99. Howie Scannell Jr. raced the 99. Now Matthew Scannell is running the 99 with Uncle Steve Scannell's company, My Box, as the sponsor on the quarter panel. 
Like you say, racing is always a family affair. No different here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. And a big wiggle from the 18 of Alex Tagliani in turn number nine. Here comes Cameron in turn 10. The door closes. Will he get the run into turn number one? And you could see Tag even had trouble getting on the throttle up out of turn number 10. That car is a big handful for Alex Tagliani. Cameron able to keep that car tucked. A much tighter line through one. Down into turn number two, he's going to shadow the race leader. That's really the first time, though, we've seen the Rona Viagra Chevrolet of Alex Tagliani take a big twitch. And it did it in turn number nine, but now it's allowing the 74 of Kevin Lacroix to close up. The 7 of Kyle Marcelli is going to come through as well. If I'm Mark Antoine Cameron spotter, I'm looking at the 74 of Kevin Lacroix and I'm telling my driver, look, I'm not saying you can drive any faster, you're driving a great race, but things are about to get uncomfortable at the front. That time it was Cameron who got a little wiggle off of turn number five, headed down the back straight away as the crews nervously watch on, pitted right beside each other. We'll be back with more on TSN. Canadian Tire Motorsport Park was the second purpose-built road race course in Canada behind Westwood Motorsport Park in BC. Today it hosts the NASCAR Pinty Series and a fight for the race lead between four drivers, Alex Tagliani, Mark Antoine Cameron, Kevin Lacroix, and Kyle Marcelli. And out is Larry Jackson. Yeah, the window net down that car has no power in it. Larry Jackson looks like his afternoon is finished. Good news, though. He's able to pull off the racing surface down an access road, so we'll avoid a full-course caution if everything holds true at this point. Good news for Alex Tagliani, anyway. You don't see any of what's coming up when you run down through turn number four towards turn five. Tagli any with a wiggle into five. Significant wiggle under braking for the Rona Viagra number 18 of Tagli any. But look at him, able to get back on the gas. He's so light on that gas pedal, but he manages to make it stick and get a good run down the straightaway. That's what he needs to keep this 22 behind him. The closer you get to the car in front of you, the harder it is to get on the throttle out of turn five. You, there's always that millisecond of delay because you've got to wait for the car in front of you to go. By the end of the straightaway, that slight hesitation leads to four or five car lengths. Watch Tank. This is the place where he had a little slip up a couple laps ago. Turn number nine. He's good through there this time. Cameron going to follow him through turn number 10. Yet another lap clicks off. Now eight laps remaining. For Alex Tagliani, was your Ray or your points leader lost that points lead last race, looking to gain it back here today, but does he have enough left? As we go in and out of these in-car cameras, I want you to listen to the sound of the throttle. These drivers are really having to work inside the car. As this fight continues at the front, we'll take one last break. We'll take you to the checker after this. Canadian Tire Motorsport Park celebrating their 60th anniversary this season. Back then, USAC stock cars took to this facility. Today, it's the NASCAR Pinty Series, and look at how close the top two are. Cameron loves that move, swinging off at of turn number two, driving to the inside through turn three. Couldn't quite make it, although he sticks the nose of the 22 to driver's right, which becomes the outside of turn four. Can he stick it outside turn four? He's going to hold there. Tagliani, a little wiggle on the inside. Cameron has the preferred position, and he has your race lead right now. Tagliani looked like he wanted to cross him over. I mean, that move takes a lot of intestinal fortitude, Dave. Boy, look at how quickly third place and fourth place caught up to the back end of the 18 as those two started battling side by side. A four horse race at the front of this field now. This time at the stripe, it'll be four laps to go. Lots of time for these drivers to make move and battle. Kevin Lacroix poked to the outside looking into turn number eight. He's got to be careful because you've got the aggressive and young Kyle Marcelli in fourth. You'd think Alex Tagliani would be in defensive mode at this point. He's in full attack mode trying to get the lead back underneath the 22 of Cameron. He took a peek in turn eight and did so again in turn 10. Now to the inside in turn number one. 
And he was defensively running the inside down into turn one because he saw Kevin Lacroix having a look. He's got to be careful, though, because you use up, you overheat those tires running a defensive line. And he still has thoughts of getting after Mark Antoine Cameron. Here goes Marcelli in turn three. Turn three he might be surprising the 74 of Kevin Lacroix as he'll stick the Dave Jacobs prepared Simcoe Building Center number seven into the top three, a podium position right now for the man from Barrie, Ontario, Kyle Marcelli. That is impressive indeed as you see the car wiggle off a of turn number four, heavy braking into five. Top four are still right together, but we've got a different order. Marcelli has raced in sports cars across North America. You name the manufacturer, he's been behind the wheel and he's likely put them in victory lane as well. And right now he's trying to do the same in the NASCAR Pinty Series. The rookie stripe on the back bumper. But as far as knowledge of Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, Marcelli is anything but a rookie here. Skillfully working off of turn number eight through nine. Down towards 10, here goes Kevin Lacroix. He'll look to the inside, couldn't make a move there. Marcelli gets a great run off the corner. You can see as you step over the exit curbing on turn number 10, a lot of dust gets kicked up as that's what the leaders saw coming off of turn 10 as they come into some of the slower traffic just ahead. And look at Marcelli starting to work over the back end of the 18 of Alex Tagliani. They're gonna work past, wow, Ray Cordemans Jr. as Tagliani crosses him over at the exit of turn two that bunches up second, third, and fourth once again. There is no hesitation from the 18 of Alex Tagliani. If he needs to go, he is going to go. But all the while, as these three drivers get caught up amongst lap traffic, your race leader, Mark Antoine Cameron, and the GM Paillet number 22 has started to open up a gap on second place. This is almost the gap that LP Dumoulin had over Mark Antoine Cameron yesterday, and Cameron was able to close that in in the last couple of laps, so it's never over, but he's got to be feeling pretty good right now behind the wheel of that 22. Cameron navigating lap traffic himself, moves to the inside of Ryan Clute in the legendary motor car number 42, so he's a lap car between himself and second place as they come across the stripe there will be two laps to go here in the Clarington 200 and should we remind you the 22 has never vic visited victory lane in the NASCAR Pinty series as a car number on a road course on a road course so say. many victories on the oval tracks and it Sadly, it became a joke because Scott Stackley led a lot of road races in that 22. Things always just went bad. I mean, within feet of the finish line sometimes. And Mark Antoine Cameron this year alone has had such a great race car at the Grand Prix at 20th year at Surfrey I-Car. And of course, finished runner-up here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park already in 2021. Al Marcelli stalking that number 18 of Alice Tagli, and he down through turn number four, down the steep hill, up the steep hill into five. Watch, now he's gonna try and get as much bite out of those tires as he can for the run up the Andretti straightaway. And did you hear that? There's no bite in those no. tires. <laughs> you can hear the rev pick up as he jumps on the loud pedal. Into the draft, though, so he might have an opportunity in turn number eight. Marcelli's going to stay in line this time. Kevin Lacroix is dropping back just a little bit in fourth. So the battle now is for second between Alex Tagliani and Kyle Marcelli. And that opens the opportunity for Kyle Marcelli, not having Kevin Lacroix right on his bumper, lets him try some things, try to set up a wide move to cross over Tagliani for second. And Mark Antoine Cameron saying, boys, you have all the fun you want back there. Leave me alone. White flag lap. This is going to be the longest 3.9 kilometers of Mark Antoine Cameron's life. He'll look out his rearview mirror through turn number two. He'll see he has a gap back to the 18 of Alex Tagliani. As the, the winner of more events at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières than any other driver, the White brothers took a chance on Mark Antoine Cameron, Derek White, Brandon White, put him in their race car. There really wasn't funding to do so, but they felt good about the move. It really helped build that 99 team. Mark Antoine Cameron has since made the move to 22 racing. 
Under the tutelage of Scott and Randy Stackley, picked up GM Pie as a sponsor a couple of years ago, took them to victory on the Oval in St. Eustache, Quebec, and now looks to do the same here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. I almost guarantee you J.C. Payet will have tears streaming down his face. He is as passionate a sponsor as we have ever seen. Through turn eight for the final time, touches the curbing on the inside, now eases his way through turn number nine. He has some distance back to second place, but the 22 will win for the first time on a road course. Mark Antoine Cameron will pick up the win. Alex Tagliani second, Kyle Marcelli in third. What a race, 51 laps, and it was just as close as it was as a 30-lapper yesterday. You can almost feel the joy in that cockpit. This is a very happy crew, Chief. Randy Steckley said you wanted to be one place better this time. You yeah, did it. We had a good afternoon, that's for sure. We had a rough uh, GP3R and ICAR, and, and uh, JC was telling me just keep positive keep trying you know keep digging and, and we did that thanks to the PIA group and, and we did it for him and his fans 22 racing's great organization uh, the guys did a great job we just keep digging and uh, it was a tough one and we finally got a road course for the 22 uh, Scott wasn't behind the wheel but he was sure behind a lot of what's what we do here so thanks Todd we'll Appreciate celebrate it. the win yeah, thank you you can see all the other teams coming through to congratulate Randy Steckley, and soon enough they'll be congratulating Mark Antoine Cameron in victory lane. That's where we'll catch up with him. The 22 team has made it to victory lane, and we wait for Mark Antoine Cameron to jump out. Tom? Okay. Yeah. Let's go, Mark. He's ready to climb out of that car. With a winning smile on his face, Mark Antoine Cameron, for the first time in three years, is victorious in the NASCAR Pinty Series. And he is feeling a both exhausted and elated as he gets congratulations from his family. You worked long and hard to get back to victory lane. Congratulations from the family. And how good does it feel to have turned around your season after a great run onto the podium in the last race here and then a victory today yeah i think we it's a it's a team win today i mean the gm Paye always believe in me and also the the team we you know we have some bad luck this year at Trois-Rivières and mirabel but we bounce back here in mossport second to yesterday and finally we got that win to them so so proud of the team so happy for the gm Paye. we we deserve it Mark Antoine Cameron victorious, and the first time the 22 car has yeah. got a victory on a road course as well. Yeah, it's hard to believe, huh? Eh? Uh, as a road course driver, first win to me on a road course and first win for the 22 racing. Thank you, Randy, my crew chief, JC Pahi over there. It's all him behind that, everything. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Mark Antoine Cameron victorious here at CTMP. Well, with Alex Tagliani. Alex, you know, talk about the decision not to take tires. You were fast all day. Does that burn you now? Well, I mean, with, uh, you know, some insight now, everything uh, that we saw a little bit, but uh, the team did a great job. It was a good weekend, you know, one, two. Uh, Mark had so much bad luck so far this year, so it's good for, uh, for his team, the 22 side, to uh, get a victory. And for us, it was good for the championship. We, um, I, think we, I, I, I think we got it, but uh, we caught a back marker at the wrong place. He got a good run, a little tap, and uh, he got me loose, and then uh, he was gone. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, it's good for the points. I think we're back in the lead, so um, let's go to Flamborough and see uh, if we can close the deal. Excellent race day for Tagliani. Almost got it done. Came up one spot short today, guys. What a gracious Alex Tagliani yeah. in his second place run. And have a look at the Mopar top 10. And you can see Ranger coming home with a top five. Gary Clute, Brett Taylor in eight spot. Dexter Stacy, another top 10, is third of the season. LP Dumoulin will be disappointed he dropped back to 11th. Meanwhile, Sam Fellows in that 98, I think, will be thrilled with that 13th place run.
Well, Kyle Marcelli, we talked about you in our intro to today's race as one of the guys to watch. you got to be real pleased with how your car ran for you today, that number seven Ford. Yeah, I, you know, it was fantastic, especially the second stint. You know, big thanks to Simcoe Building Center, more windows and doors, and Dave Jacobs. You know, I wouldn't be here without them. Uh, what a way to cap the season. I was just doing the road courses, and unfortunately I had to miss iCar, so limited laps in this car. And uh, we had some gremlins to deal with early in the weekend and yesterday, but today we put it all together, and uh, man, a third feels like a win. He was one of the fastest cars at the end of the race, guys. Another yellow might have seen Marcelli in victory lane today. Good job, Kyle. The only Ford in the field as well as we take a look at your point standings. And Alex Tagliani is right, an eight-point cushion over LP Dumoulin. And then it's 30 back to Kevin Lacroix in third. But how about Alex Gannett? Quietly a top five points run. DJ Kennington falls to eighth as well. Big smiles in victory lane, though, here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The Clarington 200 has been brought to you by Dark Horse Trailers, the winning bet. By Watson Building Supplies, Ontario's premier distributor of construction materials. By Markdom International, world-class injection molded products. And by IHL, from start to finish. What a show it was, the double header at CTMP and Marc Antoine Cameron victorious after an impressive run. But you said it, Adam, it was an impressive weekend. All weekend long here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, capped off by the Clarington 200. Tight racing all the way through this field. It was the NASCAR Pinty's first foray into a doubleheader weekend on a road course, and I've got to think it was a smash success. Judging by how tight it was all the way around these 10 turns, couple spins, Brent Weller had a big learning curve in his first ever road course start in a NASCAR Pinty's series car, but everybody else made it work. A fantastic stock car win. Cameron with a slight bump and run to take the lead. We head back to the Ovals and Flamborough Speedway for the Motomaster 125 from all of us at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.